Once, there were a few proud men, men of adventure, men of courage, men who knew the meaning of honor. There still are the Marines. We're looking for a few good men. Well, they got me. <laughs> a few good men. War is a racket. Today is the Marine Corps birthday. And while we're looking at U.S. troops once again going and fighting wars for bankers, because they were fighting for bankers and the imperialists, and it's always been like that. And we're, I'm, we're not, let's see. No, oh, we got YouTube is, uh, wow, we got YouTube here. Okay, I thought I'd been cut off from YouTube, but I guess not. Not yet. Facebook, that's another story. <laughs> Facebook, uh, I guess uh, Zuckerberg doesn't like the free speech, something like that. Anyway, a few good men. When I was 19 years old, I had no intention whatsoever of joining the military. In fact, before I watched a movie, you couldn't have paid me. Hell no, dude. I, when I got out of high school, man, I moved right out of my mom's house, even though it was a, a beautiful environment with a loving mother. And, you know, like my bedroom was like a studio apartment, basically. But I, I wanted to spread my wings early. I had a job. I had a job as a paper boy. I was mowing lawns at like six, seven, eight years old. Like <laughs> kids don't do that anymore. Um, and, you know, at 19 years old, man, I was a waiter in a French restaurant. I was making great money. Really great money. I lived in a fantastic apartment in Encinitas on E Street in Encinitas. If you've ever been to San Diego, most people would like to live there. And when I was a kid, it still had some of the things that, that we could love. Um, and where I was, E Street was literally on a cliff directly overlooking the ocean. I could literally lie in my bed and look at the sun setting. I could be with my girlfriend and enjoy the same view. Um, you know, it was a time where I did not have any thought whatsoever of giving up my freedom and joining the military. But then I watched a movie, and there's Stanley Kubrick, a Jew that I love. There we go. That's allowed for me to say, oh, I'm so sorry Facebook doesn't get to hear that one. I love some of you, Zuckerberg. I said some, the, the real ones. Anyway, I had no intention of doing that. But this man, Stanley Kubrick, a Jew, um, he had the most profound impact on my life. First off, I was born July 21st, 1969. A year earlier, a movie was made, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Now, you could watch that movie today, and you would be blown away. Like, no way was that movie done in 1968. That's 55 years ago. I know, because I'm 54. So 55 years ago, a movie was made called 2001, A Space Odyssey. It's all about space, as you might imagine. If you haven't seen it, it's really worth watching. Um, it, it's quite a movie. Everything Stanley Kubrick did was amazing, if you ask me. My favorite producer, director of all time, hands down. But he made that movie, and it was shot in London, in a London studio. And all the technology was like Avatar technology when Avatar came out. Like, how the hell did they create this alternate world? Of Avatar. Now we have deep fake, so it's next level. But back then in 1968, absolutely incredible what, what he did with this cinematic masterpiece. Um, and that was 68. I was born in 69, July 21st, on the day they landed on the moon, or so they say, on July 20th. And officially, those famous step, those famous words. One small step for man, a, one giant leap for mankind. And I was born literally like within an hour of that. The whole world was watching. <laughs> literally, if you had a TV, you were watching it. And I was born right then. Coincidentally, at the same time as the fake moon landing, yes, definitely fake as hell, man. If you believe that, whatever. That's your right. 
I believed it too for about 30, I don't know, three, four years, something like that. And then I looked at it and it was like, no way. <laughs> We've never been. And if we have been, why haven't we been back? Anyway, the reason why this is useful, and I'm still in the free speech zone. See, I haven't said anything that uh, Zuck would have been upset about. In fact, I said I loved a Jew already. Wow. And what it tells us is that deception is it's much deeper, much greater than people realize. Uh, you really have to open your eyes and be willing to accept truths that are extremely painful if you are serious about the truth. Make no mistake about it. You're going to learn a lot of things, a lot of things that aren't going to make you happy if you really, really, really dig for the truth. So, yeah. And so on that day that I was born, while uh, one of the greatest frauds of all time, to that day, I would have said perhaps the greatest fraud of all time. There was also a ceremonial. There was a get-together of uh, all males in a place called Bohemian Grove, roughly about 40, 50 miles away from where I was born. Bohemian Grove, for those that don't know, uh, they have a, a nice little get-together, and they have a big giant owl, Moloch. Funny enough, Moloch is directly linked, and again, I'm just talking history here, Hello, fact checkers, censors, and all that crap. Yeah, Moloch, um, I've heard, is uh, aligned with sort of this satanic pagan practice. I don't know. I've just heard that. I might, I might be able to say that in a few minutes when we're in the free speech zone. I don't know. I'm going to see if it comes to me. Right now, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. Moloch. So there's a bunch of people like Ronald Reagan. Uh, Nixon was there. You name it, the movers and shakers, it's a boys club and it's all men and it's it's not something that you're allowed to go to. Alex Jones did a little thing on that where he got in there and he filmed some of this stuff and it was apparent, you know, it's supposed to be according to their records. This ceremony they do is called cre the cremation of care. Hmm. It's kind of hard to, the cremation of care. Okay, so we're we're going to cremate the body with care all right if you say so and uh, if you know anything about satanism you might you, i've heard i've heard again i'm just this is just conjecture I, I might have clarity of mind in a few minutes when uh i leave um the youtube realm i'm not sure but i've heard that uh moloch is linked to this sort of uh, satanic uh, sort of luciferian stuff and also that i i've heard this that um, they sacrifice uh, uh, children. Um, I've, only, I've heard that. I might have clarity in a few more minutes here and be able to speak more clearly. Right now, it's a little fuzzy, and it's just conjecture. I just don't know, right? Um, but at the cremation of care, okay, uh, they had a, a mock sacrifice or so, we're told. And uh, they got this Moloch character there while I was being born. For me, this is, <laughs> for all I know, they were doing uh, an actual um, bad things to babies with daggers uh, while I was being born. The reason why I'm saying this is that, one, the world is not anything close to what we think it is unless we've looked really deep. And that means you're going to be looking into some really dark stuff. A lot of people couldn't even handle the stuff uh, on video. Uh, when you go to war, um, war, they, they, they glorify this stuff. They glorify this stuff. But this man here, Smedley Butler, General Smedley Butler, um, unlike Adolf, uh, who joined as a private, so, so did, so did Smedley, but he ended up as a major general and literally the, the most decorated Marine soldier Marines aren't called soldiers, to be honest. We're called Marines, but whatever. They say soldier. Marines. <laughs> uh, I mean, come on. We're the first ones in. We're the last ones to leave. And the one thing that is true about the Marines, although they really, really, really uh, uh, progressed it so long that, um, you know, there's things that exist today. Thanks to 
YouTube and uh, Facebook and uh, free speech that allows for us to basically encourage uh, the younger ones to entertain different ideas of sexuality before they're even in puberty. Um, you know, this is really progress, I have to say. And, and you know, um, you know, back in the day, uh, it wasn't very positive. Like you, you really didn't want to communicate that you were uh, homosexual. Um, and let me get this clear. I, I don't have hate for anybody. Literally, I literally don't. There are people that I would kill as a matter of duty if I were confronted with them, if I understood that they were guilty of a serious crime that isn't being dealt with and ultimately uh, they could kill again. So in that sense, it's ironic. Um, it's kind of what the Israelis are saying, the right to defend themselves, right? But I guess that's a one-way street. And that's the case with uh, the United States and war as a racket. Spenley Butler was a Marine for decades as a private all the way through Major General. And what he means by war as a racket, he explains in detail how our job as Marines is effectively, um, sometimes we're, we're sent in to actually attack a potential threat. But even in World War II with the Japanese, we had Tarawa, Iwo Jima. These are wild. I mean, the Japanese fought tooth and nail. Um, they were dug in tunnels, trenches. Uh, it was brutal. But, I mean, we hammered the hell out of them. And, uh, and we landed on these islands. And that's the famous, uh, famous flag being lifted. That's Iwo Jima um, in Washington, D.C. They have that very monument. The bottom line is we are mercenaries for bankers. This is the truth about what we do. Now, when I was young and dumb, all it took was a movie, Full Metal Jacket. And while I never had any intention of, of joining the Marines, uh, I watched that movie and in the first five minutes, I was like, that's what I need. Because... A part of it was that my father didn't love me properly. How many of you might have that situation? Maybe you had an abusive father like me, like Adolf as well, and, and many other people. Um, you know, there's something about being a, a, a boy, a young boy or you know, young man, and you don't get love from your father. The effect it had on me was to drive me, to motivate me to achieve things that were so good that even my dad would have to say, wow, that's, wow, you did a really good job there, son. But I can honestly say, <laughs> I really don't remember him saying that at all. I remember him saying when I was a kid at 10 years old, sat me down when I was forced to go stay with him. Uh, mo you know, like after so long, I wanted to see my dad and I wanted to do things like go feed the ducks. He took me to do that and the seagulls sometimes. And I, those were like the best times I had with him. Um, but he rarely did that. And I, when I did go over, I was stuck in his house. He didn't take me anywhere. There was no kids to play with. And I was just sitting there with, with my dad and not really paying any attention to me. And my mom was the opposite and just treated me like on, you, you know, unconditional love through and through. Uh, she gave me the attention that probably all kids want and maybe demand if they feel they can get away with it. And so my mother loved me to no end, which probably just pissed off my father that much more. And so when I went to see my dad, you know, there was, a, I'm sure there was an element of like, you know, I'm going to kind of torment my boy a little bit. Now, keep in mind, he was horribly abused as a kid. And I did find this out uh, only in the last few years, but he was badly abused. He was put in an orphanage at four years old, uh, abandoned by his mother, who was chasing bad women and drugs. Um, and while he was in, while he was in the uh, the orphanage, he was sexually, uh, mentally, and physically abused. So he, he was raped. He was beaten and he was emotionally uh, abused. You're useless, blah, blah, blah. So he was so damaged from childhood that, you know, I thank God for my mother because she gave me, she gave me so much love that it made up for it. Like when my dad sat me down when I was 10 years old and he literally, he sat me down 
Um, I, you know, he's like, son, come here. I want to talk to you. And he sat me down and he said, son, I love you because you're my son, but I don't like you. <sighs> Whoa, <laughs> that is not what you want to hear from your dad at all. I suppose that's why I've developed a thick skin. Like, I often laugh if people want to try and offend me. I, I'm getting very few trolls, by the way. Very few trolls. Um, they, they, when they come, they're just generally they're getting attacked now. But there have been times, especially around World Citizen, when they were just attacking me left, right, and center. I don't really care at all for a long time. I don't care. The only people really that can offend me are people that know me personally. Um, and if it's, you know, certain issues like honor, as an example, if, if somebody knows me and ever questions my honor, um, you know, I'll give them an opportunity to reassess what it is that's making them think that, but you know, that's, that, that don't fly with me. I don't hurt people unless they need to be hurt, i.e. they want to hurt me. Um, and I like to be kind and gentle and fun and, and nice. And I get along with people. To, went to the store today. I mean, black ladies that working in the, the shop I went into, they know me and um, I enjoy that. I really do. I like being a good guy. I like kind of making people smile and, and being a good guy. Um, but I really don't give a shit what somebody thinks of me unless they know me. Um, and there's a difference between the me, the guy, you know, in the flesh and blood in person and the guy you see in the public realm there is and there isn't i'm still the same guy but you don't know me you don't know everything about me a lot of talking heads like for instance jordan peterson you look at these public figures and you think you know them but you don't um now while there's a lot of stuff to back up you know i am exactly as i present myself to be you still can't know for sure unless you got to know me. Thankfully, I've known a lot of people. And for the last several years, for the most part, I am couch surfing um, people's homes. Thank God. Otherwise, I literally would be on the street. Um, those people, you know, it's kind of it's kind of odd. You know, when when you are dependent, when you need some help and you're in somebody else's house, my mom taught me to respect. If you're in somebody else's home, you need to respect that home, their rules, and, and do everything you can to be a positive influence and guest. Um, so by necessity, I've had to live with more and more people. And some of them have been agents. Not now. <laughs> but some of them have been agents. I mean, literally, I could tell you wild stories. And I'm going to write several books, God willing, but I could tell you so many stories these people again i don't it doesn't i don't give a shit you know people can call me whatever names i think it's one of the things that that is important if you wish to really affect serious change in this world as well you should be sensitive to the legitimate uh gripes or uh, feedback that is not positive about you it is very important to be honest about that and, and if you have a really good friend as I've said to the people around me, I don't want a yes man. You know, all I ask for is respect. Actually, all I require is respect. Um, and if you have a critique, like there are times when I, I'm difficult. I'm a very intense individual and I'm difficult. And right now, I want to go to Gaza. And I, I, I see myself going there. Even if it's in the aftermath of this, I want to be a big part of rebuilding it, like the phoenix rising from the ashes. My drive is to do good. And I consider that the greatest blessing of life. But I've been able to tra travail these challenges and, you know, take the digs and, and put myself in the fire and survive it all. And a lot of it I owe to the Marines. A lot of it. That was a whole story in itself. I, I'll probably write a book, Full Metal Jacket by Ken O'Keefe, and um, explain that one. But it helped make me a man, and it taught me 
about my birth nation. It opened my mind. The logic was when I got hard done by because I refused an unlawful order, as I recommend any and all of you who are in the military, you're on the verge of World War III. They're going to send you to fight Israeli wars. And ultimately, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you are not going to be proud of going and fighting in somebody's distant land who has no gripe with you. I mean, even with all the things that America is doing by literally, why aren't they burning American flags everywhere over there and really, really, really shouting day in, day out, we hate America. No, you need to go to Israel to see that kind of vitriol and hatred. You really do. And I have some video, but I have a, a, a particular theme that I'm going to get into today. And I want to thank my producer for basically doing what will happen as this team does expand. For those that are coming, I'll speak a little bit about that. Um, and, oh, dude. Okay, let me see here. <laughs> I want to put in the Rumble link. Uh, I don't have Marcus is not here. He has a function and he's been here like virtually every day. Um, so the rumble link that you want to go to, let me think, how do I add that in? Can I write that in edit? No, I don't want to edit layout. Okay. So it's rumble.com <laughs> rumble.com. Uh, forward slash C. I, I'll tell you what, I'm going to write in the comments. So those of you, well, you're already, yeah, you're in, in YouTube. So I'm going to give it to you there. If you're in YouTube, you should see my comment, comment here. Rumble.com forward slash C forward slash TJP forward slash live. There you go. All right. So excellent. Gotcha. So if, hopefully those of you in YouTube, hello, Del Boy, uh, DK, right on, Tom B. There you go. Tom B set me straight. I didn't see that first, Tom B, but type it in the chat. Thank you. You, you want an assistant producer job there, Tom? This is the kind of stuff I need. Ashley Walker. Hello. Hello. How are you doing, Ashley? Hope you're doing well. And um, looks like some of you diehards are sticking with the YouTube thing. Actually, purebred blood heretic currently watching from Australia. All oh, right. Oh, wow. What time is it there? Australia. I think it's your afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure. Noon, afternoon. You can go ahead and tell me if you want pure blood heretic. I love you guys, man. I love the Aussies. Uh, I'm not impressed with you not reigning in your freaking governments, but aside from that, um, I like you guys. And if I had my choice, I would have naturalized. I've got my Irish citizenship. I got my U S citizenship. I got my Palestinian citizenship and I got my Hawaiian citizenship and I'm a world citizen as well. There you go. See that one. See that there's a method to the madness here. World citizen. Um, but I would have liked to have had my Aussie citizenship, man. All I wanted to do was surf. All I wanted to do at 18 years old, I had no plans to join the Marine Corps. <laughs> and I tried to immigrate to Oz. And I still haven't been there, even though my mom was born in Melbourne. God help that place. Anyway, I hope that those of you who are here in YouTube, Nick Hill. Hello. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for that uh, lovely compliment. Um, Jem Anya Suarez. Sup, Ken? Semper Fi. Semper Fi, my brother. Did I ask you this? You're a Marine. I did. Did I? I'm, I'm, apologies for being a bit slow sometimes. Lavaya Cruz. Thank you for the good works, Ken. Greetings from Japan. Oh, wow. Hand pink waving, hand pink waving. <laughs> From Japan. Well, I spent time in Japan too. Would love. To, in fact, I'm supposed to speak in Okinawa. Like I got to been cut off from Skype. I got a contact over there. I got to get in contact with him. I'm supposed to speak at like a UFO conference thing, an embassy uh, for the U uh, for the aliens that's being built. And um, I want to go, 
for those that don't know about Admiral Byrd and Antarctica, I tell you what, the aliens are a lot closer than, than you think. The world, as I started with this, is not what we think. It is definitely not. So I'm going to switch over and get into some stuff that I would not be able to show here on YouTube. Um, and Zuckerberg was ahead of the curve. Boy, he saw me coming. And I'm cut off from Facebook from uh, live for um, a month. <laughs> Greece. Oh, wow. Kiri Pan from Greece. Uh, Pure blood. Hey, Ken. Uh, it's 1120 a.m., mate. Yeah. Much love. There we go. Yeah, I was close. Um, Celine loves light. I have your Rumble channel in my favorites, so it's automatic connect. Aloha. Thank you. Good, Celine. Thank you. Uh, like and subscribe. Even on the YouTube. You're here on YouTube. Go ahead and like and subscribe that stuff, please. Um, and uh, that'll be helpful. Medusoid, humanoid. Hello again. Hello again. Uh, JM. What you got? You got you got some sort of fighter in there, JM. Scottish, 21-year-old, tuning in from Glasgow. Ah, uh, not those softy Edinburgh types. No, we got a Glaswegian here. I hear there's some real issues over that way. I would love to return to Scotland. I have spoken there before. I love it. I got to get up to the Highlands at some point, too, and uh, get in touch with my Scottish Celtish uh, roots. So welcome from Scotland. Glasgow, I've watched you since I've been 17. Wow. Any thoughts on my football team? Oh, Glasgow Celtic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. I think I have loaded one of those videos showing them. For those that don't know, I'll, I, I won't spoil the surprise. I'll tell you what, Jam. Remind me. Remind me. I, I'll definitely show that. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll just go ahead and blow some of the cover and, and say what he's referring to. Um, Celtic. Uh, is is the football team from from Glasgow, and uh, you know they're they're very. Hey man, we're all Celts, you know. I mean, we're slightly different, but really we have the same sort of understanding. Um, the Scottish have their own sort of understanding because they're right there on the same island with with the British. So you know, there's been some. Uh, well, have you ever seen Braveheart? You'll have an idea that is not completely historically correct at all, but. It is not uh, like a classic Hollywood BS thing. Bottom line is that uh, Celtic uh, has been showing support for Palestine despite uh, the professional football league's demands that you all get lockstep in line with the policy of our corrupt governments. They said, <clears throat> no thanks. And God bless the Scottish man, William Wallace. Freedom. Freedom. Freedom ain't free. Thank you. And I will try and show one of those clips, Joe. Thank, wow, 17 to 21. That's awesome, man. Uh, I'll be curious to talk to you at some point. See how many of the younger younger folks are, are liking the old geezer me. Um, most of the audience is a bit, a bit older. So that's really beautiful to see. I'm definitely going to get in these comments. I've suggested to both George Galloway and Chris Hedges to have you on their shows. Much respect, Ken. I love a real patriot. I tell you what, yeah, I mean, I'm not getting the invites. I mean, I'm supposed to be on Al Jazeera probably tomorrow or the next day. I'm going to be on, what is it, uh, AL24 from Algeria, um, which is a big channel and it's a proper interview. But, of course, these are Arabic-focused, right? Um, I mean, Al Jazeera English is covering everything. Um, and so is the other one, AL24. But um, even RT... RT, you know, like, hey, man, where's my invite? Did I not do a good job on all the programs I did? I thought I did. I think most people thought I did. Why aren't you having me on again? I'll tell you why. Even even press TV. And, I mean, they, they're going to come knocking again. Don't get me wrong. But it's still, it's like, why aren't you having me on more regularly? I'll tell you why. For the very reasons that I have to end the YouTube section of this stream. That's why. In fact, before I tell you why... I have to leave the stream. So if you're not on Rumble, I just want to read these last comments. Um, I, that's why. And you would think they'd all be like, have me on speed dial. Um, 
BBC and CNN and all these guys, well, that's totally understandable why they don't want me on. Um, but, you know, these ones, like, and, and it's the Nazi narrative. I'm going to get into that. You better all be going over to, to Rumble, please, because seriously, um, you know, I'm looking at all this stuff. The, all these comparisons between the Jewish state of Israel and the so-called Nazis. I hate it. I don't even like that word hate, but I freaking hate it. I hate it. It would be like, you know, like my father. He's not my father, but it would be like, I know my father. I know him. He's a good man. He's tried to help people. He's done, taking great risk. He was selfless. He promised things and he delivered. And yet he's getting attacked and slandered and libeled. Like, that's how I feel about this man i think his name was adolf am i allowed to even say that i don't know adolf is that is that name banned i'll tell you what i'll go ahead and say exactly what i want to say about why all the media that you would have thought would be friendly like like so much of the palestinian solidarity you would think they'd all be grateful you would think the anti-war movement would embrace me given what i've done to try and stop a war and how amazingly close I slash we came with the human shields, but there's a reason why they don't invite me. And it's the elephant in the room, the elephant in the room that you can't talk about on YouTube. So you have a few seconds here. <laughs> Literally, I'm going to say bye bye to YouTube and I'll see you over in Rumble. And then we get Ken O'Keefe uncensored straight as hell politically fucking incorrect damn it there's my first swear word anyway here we go remove youtube is getting kanked now all right three 